Now the first thing we need to do is actually spin up a server to install Jenkins on, and that's what I've done here. So I've just named it Service for Hackers Jenkins Blue Ocean because we're going to install Jenkins and get Blue Ocean running on it so we have that nice UI. And then we'll see how to configure Jenkins. So in this video, I just want to install it, some dependencies we'll need, and we'll get it up and running. So I'm actually logged in here already over here, over SSH. And what we can do here is just go straight into installing a few things and then Jenkins. So the first thing I'm going to do is just run app get update, and after that we'll install a few basic utilities. All right, so that's finished, and I can just install some utilities like Vim and curl, wget, zip and unzip, ntp to keep the system clock up to date, stuff like that. And then we can get right into getting the latest version of Jenkins. So there's just a few commands for that. The first thing we're going to do is grab a key from Jenkins, and we'll do apt key add to add it. And what that does is just tell the local version of app get to trust the repository from Jenkins that will give us the Jenkins package so that we can install it. So we've added the key to trust the repository and that repository will contain our package of Jenkins. Now we can add that repository to our local server here. So this string deb and then the location of the binary is going to get added to the file etsy app sources.list.d Jenkins.list. So we're just adding this single line into the file Jenkins.list, and that will just tell the server that there's a new repository to check for new packages. So since there's a new repository, we'll run apt-get update again. It'll know about that new Jenkins repository. It'll find new items inside of it. You can see here, it's just gotten a few of those. And now we'll actually have Jenkins available to install. So I can just do sudo apt-get install-y Jenkins. And once this finishes installing, we'll continue to see how to use it. All right, that's finished. We can curl localhost at port 8080 and see that it should be up and running. All right, and we do, we get a response back and it actually has some HTML here in a nice format that we can see if we do use curl, which is a nice touch, but basically just saying you're not authenticated and you need to authenticate. That's great. We just know it's up and running, but it's gonna tell us that we need to log in. All right, so that's running on port 8080, like you might have noticed. I actually want to put Nginx in front of it so that it can run in port 80, or we can put it behind an SSL certificate if we want. So I'm actually just going to go straight ahead and install Nginx, and we'll configure that quickly to run and proxy requests over to port 8080 where Jenkins is listening. Since I'm on Ubuntu, I'm going to add a new repository to get the latest Nginx stable. We'll get sudo apt-get update, and once that finishes, we'll do sudo apt-get install-y Nginx. All right, so Nginx is up and running and installed. I'm going to just remove the sites enabled default configuration. So what this is going to do is just delete the default configuration that Nginx comes with out of the box on the Ubuntu servers. And then I'm going to create a new one. So Etsy Nginx sites available, not enabled. I want to create one in the sites available directory, and I'll just call this Jenkins. Now the configuration for it is pretty simple. I'm going to define a server block. I'm only going to list it on port 80. I'm not going to cover setting up an SSL certificate here. I have other videos on doing that. If you want, you can check them out on the Service for Hackers site. Server name is just going to be localhost. There's only one server configured on here, so it doesn't really matter what my server name is. I could actually even make that the default underscore, which is just Nginx's notation for our default server. Okay, so location and the backslash, which means any URI that's hitting this configuration. It's going to proxy pass. It's going to send this request off to Jenkins, which is listening on the localhost network at port 8080. And then we just set some headers. This is basically like load balancing, except we are just proxying off any requests over to Jenkins. There's no load balancing going on here, except it is a proxy still. So we still do the things like resetting the host header and setting x forwarded for to the IP address of the real client and stuff like that. Reset some timeouts, increase the buffer so the HTTP request can be a little larger, along with client max body size and buffer size. All pretty basic configuration. So I'll save and quit that. Okay, so we added the Jenkins file within sites available. What we need to actually do is make sure there's a sidlink to it in the sites enable directory to enable this configuration. So I'm going to do this command, ln-s, to create a symlink, and we do source and destination. The source is the file that exists inside of the sites available. Destination, the, the symlink we want to make inside of sites enabled. OK, so I will list out the sites enabled directory. We see the symlink to Jenkins, and that's the only configuration enabled right now. So let's do sudo nginx-t, and I'll also do sudo service nginx config tests. These both basically do the same thing. It's just test out the configuration and report back any errors. This seems to be working just fine. So I'll do sudo service nginx reload, which should have reloaded the configuration inside of nginx. So I'll head back over here, get the public IP address of this Jenkins server, make a new tab with that, and we should see Jenkins pop up here. Great, and we do. All right, I'm actually going to close this tab. 
All right, so it tells us to unlock Jenkins. There's a file with an initial admin password here, which we can add here. This is just some security, so Jenkins isn't accessible unless you're the one that's actually in the server installing it. So we'll just copy and paste this file. I'm gonna head back to the server, cat out that file to spit out the um, content of it with sudo, and we'll get that password and throw that in here and continue. Okay, cool. So I always go ahead and just install suggested plugins instead of selecting my own. Just will run through a few things. You can see the, all the plugins that it installs, including Git related ones and GitHub organization, which is what we're gonna use in a little bit. Pipeline, which is an important one in Jenkins. And after this, we'll see it's up and running and I'll install a few more things so we can get going. All right, so I'm gonna make a username and a password here. We're actually gonna end up using GitHub for authentication against Jenkins, but this will be a good starting place here. So I'm gonna make a Fidelper user, give it a long password, and we'll save that, and I'll use that to log in in the meantime. All right, Jenkins is ready, let's start using it. Okay, so this is empty Jenkins in the default. There's really nothing going on here. I actually wanna do one more thing here, and that's gonna involve installing Docker on the server. Now, I'm gonna use Docker. You don't need to, but I typically do, because even if you don't use Docker in production, it's a really nice way to run your tests in a contained environment. So you can have a Docker container that runs your PHP unit test or whatever your language of choice is, and you don't have to install all this stuff onto your Jenkins server. You can just use Docker, it'll spin up a container, run your test, report back the result, and then you can get rid of that container in the end to clean up after yourself. So I'll just install Docker, and that's just a few easy steps. Now the easiest way is to curl request get.docker.com and just pipe that to shell, and that will install Docker on whatever system you have, including installing things like support for AUFS, the file system that Docker likes to use. All right, at this point, Docker is installed. Notice this last line here, sudo user mod ag docker your user. So if you'd like to use Docker as a non-root user, you should now consider adding the user to the Docker group. Otherwise, you have to use sudo to run Docker commands. So if I run just docker ps to see running Docker containers, I'll get an error. If I run sudo docker ps, it works fine. Now, if I want it so I don't have to use sudo, I can add my current user, which is user Ubuntu, to group Docker. And this is set up in a way that that will let me use Docker commands without sudo. So I actually have to exit, I'll log back in, and I can do Docker PS now without sudo. Okay, so now we have a user Jenkins since we installed it, right? So if I cat out Etsy password and I'll grep out, I'll search for Jenkins, we'll see we have a user named Jenkins and also a group Jenkins. And this is the home directory for that user Jenkins. So user Jenkins is going to be the user that runs any jobs that we set up. So I also want user Jenkins to be able to run Docker commands without sudo. So I'll do the exact same command, except I'll add the group Docker to user Jenkins. And we can see groups Jenkins to see that that is indeed one of the groups given to user Jenkins. Okay, so user Jenkins can also now run Docker without sudo. The last thing I'm going to do is install Docker Compose. Now, if you head on over to Git and just search in Google for GitHub Docker Compose, you'll end up in the repository. You can go to releases and get the latest release. And I see the latest release is 1.12. And they give us a really nice command just to download that and throw it on our system. So I'm gonna copy and paste that, head on over here. I'm gonna become user root because it's a lot easier. You don't have to deal with any permission stuff. Um, that just downloads Docker Compose directly to user local bin. And then I'll copy and paste this next line, which is just to chmod it plus X to make it executable by all users. Okay, so I'll go back to user Ubuntu. We can say which Docker Compose, see it's installed, Docker Compose version, just gonna spell that right. And we'll see that it's 1.12, which we just installed. Okay, so that's just it for this video. We installed Jenkins. We let it install the default set of plugins that it wants us to use. We were able to log into it and create a default admin user. And then I installed Docker on the server because I just know that in my case, I'm gonna use Docker to run my unit tests for my code base. In the next video, we'll see how to set up Jenkins to use GitHub for authentication and authorization. Then we can see some basic setup to start using it with an application.